There is parking for blue badge holders that's pre-arranged before the event. We parked in Wellington Barracks. Buckingham Palace is then a short walk away. We found that it took between 5 and 10 minutes, but I definitely allow 15 because of the crowds. It was lovely walking past St James's Park on the right, and along the trail we found some reporters that were reporting on the garden party with the upcoming coronation. Along the route there are stewards who are directing you on where to go. Here you can see the Queen Victoria Memorial in the distance. That's where we're aiming for. That is just in front of Buckingham Palace. So we walked along the road and we now have reached the outer gates around Buckingham Palace. This is where you need to show your invitations. We then go on to Spur Walk. You'll see up ahead that we are separated from the from most of the crowd. Anybody with access needs is escorted around the outside um, to a separate gate. Here's the Queen Victoria Memorial that stands in front of Buckingham Palace. There's plenty of armed guards around and stewards that are directing people on where to go. Most of the guests are going through the main gate of Buckingham Palace, but for access we're going round past onto the side, I believe it's the Africa Gates. More on that shortly. We were allowed to park at 2 o'clock, the gates opened at 3 o'clock and the royal family enter the garden at 4 o'clock. Here you'll see which gate that we queued up at. Most of the attendants are going through the centre entry gate but disabled was on the side. It was a very short wait. Um, we parked at 2 o'clock at a slow walk round. We didn't have to wait long before the gates opened. To get in, you need to make sure you have your invitation ready and also two forms of ID. One must be photographic. The rule for most attendants is that you don't take any large bags, backpacks, etc. But for people with disabilities that need to take medication, feed and other supplies, you are allowed to take those in. There are police that check your bags at the access gate to ensure that there is nothing that um, isn't allowed in there. You are allowed to take medication and things you need to survive, etc. Um, and they do make allowances for this. Everyone was so welcoming. There we are now entering Buckingham Palace. We've had our ID checked and now we're joining the queue. If attending in a wheelchair, I suggest that you don't go onto the red pebbles. They are deep in places and you might get stuck, especially in a manual chair. So I stopped here as police officers checked my wheelchair and checked my baggage for anything that we weren't allowed to take in. You can stay on the path all the way into the garden here. There is no need to go onto the um, red pebbles. I did at one point as we turned the corner, I did think about going onto the red pebbles, tested it, got, felt like I might get stuck and changed my mind. We had a bit of a laugh about that. <laughs> As you approach the garden, you can hear the music start playing. There is two bands um, within the garden that play music during the party. One of them also play the national anthem. The national anthem is played when the royal family enter the garden at around four o'clock. I think this is my favourite part of the whole party, walking into Buckingham Palace Gardens. There's just everybody was so happy and smiling and I think I was still in disbelief that I was actually there in the garden of Buckingham Palace. 
it, I can't even explain how spectacular it looks. Like we were surrounded by beautiful plants and gardens. Everyone was just absolutely beaming from ear to ear. And listening to the band, it was just so surreal. So this building that you can see in front of us now, with the columns, this is where we were asked to meet at the end of the party, everybody in wheelchairs, ready for the walk by of the royal family. Now I didn't actually know what it was at the time, but since um, it may actually be the, uh, the royal swimming pool, where children have learned how to swim from the royal family, that's as um, much as I seem to have been able to find out about this building on the side. But as we turn here left into the garden you can see the band playing and you have your first look across Buckingham Palace Gardens. The Royal Tea Tent is in the background there, the drinks, um, arrival drinks are to the left and the toilets are behind it but just listen to that band. see a general map out of the garden. The royal tea tent opens around 3.30 p.m. The royal family enter the garden at four o'clock. Arrival drinks are to the left of the tea tent um, and also the toilets are in a block behind that are fully accessible with the ramp access. First aid is just over to the left outside of the picture. As we rolled across the garden, we were approached by one of the royal family's ushers that you can see here. Um, we had a bit of a chat. He asked why we'd attended. I jokingly said, well, I was invited and I wasn't going to turn down a invitation by the royal family. He asked what we did for the community, um, which led to the invitation being sent out. Because with it being the king's coronation, they were inviting volunteers who'd made an impact in the community. He then asked if I'd like to be presented to Duchess Sophie. Some people are selected ahead of time to be presented to members of the royal family and then others are selected by the um, royal family ushers that walk around in the palace garden during the party. Each member of the royal family attending has their own usher who approaches people and then arranges um, to meet them. If you are selected to meet a member of the royal family, they ask you to meet them in a certain position at 20 to 4 before the royals enter the garden. So as we had um, about half an hour, we then went for a little walk around the garden and went to get an arrival drink. At the garden party, you are free to meander around the gardens um, and take in some of the scenery. Um, there's lots of staff and stewards on that you can talk to and have a chat. And people are very generally very friendly. We spoke to many other guests whilst we were there. I think everybody was just really happy to be there. The queue for arrival drinks can be quite long, but it does move quite quickly. Um, the drink on offer was lemon barley. To my right here, you can see the tea tent. Now the tea tent, it opens around 3.30 p.m. to guests um, to get a drink and food. 
So if you are meeting a member of the royal family, I would suggest that you get there quite quickly because the um, selection does go down quite a bit as the day goes by. The menu for the day was sandwiches including coronation chickpea wrap, crushed pea and mint finger, chicken tarragon and asparagus wrap, smoked salmon and lemon cream cheese mini bagel, Clarence Court egg mayonnaise with fresh salad cress, gram gammon ham, fresh vine tomatoes and whole grain mustard. There was also a selection of cakes, Dundee cake, coffee eclair, raspberry shortbread, chocolate croissant, mulberry bakewell slice, apricot and lavender tart, raspberry victoria sponge and a traditional scone with blackcurrant jam and clotted cream. Sandringham apple juice and Twining's garden party tea are also available. If you have an allergy or intolerance, please speak to the catering staff. They have received training about ingredients in the dishes and try to reduce cross-contamination um, of ingredients. They are very happy to help. In preparation for the royal family coming out into the garden at four o'clock, you'll hear the guard being released and marched down the palace steps. The road is cleared and the guard basically form an area that the royal family will enter into and to meet everyone at the party through lanes. You can see them here marching down the palace steps. You'll know when the royal family enter the garden because the national anthem will play. Once the guard had been taken down, one of the ushers came and collected us to get us in line, ready to be presented to Duchess Sophie. All of the royal family take different routes through the garden, so the ushers position people ready to meet or be presented to the members of the royal family. I hadn't realised that my fascinator would create quite a stir in the Royal Garden Party and I think it's one of the reasons why I stood out and was selected to meet Duchess Sophie because I don't usually wear formal attire um, and I don't own a fascinator. I decided to make my own out of some um, aquarium decorations and children's toys. I had so many compliments through the day about my fascinator and the hat that I had made for Shep, my guest, um, for the Royal Garden Party. Um, I definitely suggest that if you don't wear formal attire, usually that you do make your own if you're able to. Because like I said, it was just one of the um, most talked about things during the day was our fascinator and hat that was sea life themed. One of the best parts of the day was meeting all of the other volunteers that were there. We met some ladies um, from Scarborough and had a chat with them and lots of other people. Um, it was just so lovely how everyone was happy to talk to each other and everyone was just so happy to be there.
And then we had some aquarium decorations left over from the last tank to clean them up and use them. <laughs> I'm from the seaside. Are you from the seaside? Bit of seaside. Uh, red car. <laughs> 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 We're from Scarborough, so it's not a million miles. Oh, oh, there you go. It's a million miles. Yeah. Dude, I don't feel so bad saying red car down there. Oh, well, red car's lovely. So, uh, Scarborough's even better, though. <laughs> Especially when you see in front of the giant ice cream over there. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to have ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, they do nice. Um, ice cream at Red Cow yeah, as well. Yeah, that's right. We're infamous for lemon drops. That's right, yeah. See, they brought the extra long stuff. At 4 p.m. the royal family enter the garden after the national anthem is played. At this point we were quite far back so we didn't really get to see them but obviously we'd already been putting the lines ready to meet the royal family. So if you're not meeting the royal family I would suggest that you're closer to the road so that you can see the royal family as they enter the garden at 4 o'clock. The garden party we attended was the King's first garden party and was hosted by the King and Queen Consort who were also accompanied by the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, the Duke of Kent and the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh. We had approximately a half an hour wait um, in line to meet the royal family as they went down the lines to meet the garden guests. Um, we were in the line to meet Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, but we also got to see the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Edward, as he also walked down a lane quite close by. It was lovely watching them take their time meeting each guest they were obviously in no hurry and um, they were quite happy to stand and chat to each on the left there you see duchess sophie shaking hands with members of the public it was an absolutely lovely day very few clouds in the sky we were so lucky with the weather um, we really didn't mind just sitting and waiting for our turn People were attending the garden party for lots of different reasons. Some were volunteers, some had been nominated as the coronation champions for their volunteer work in the community. Others had received um, awards like Queen's Honours, MBEs, OBEs, etc. and had chosen to have their, um, Queen, their honour presented locally and attend a garden party due to the COVID pandemic. So there were some people who had waited um, a good four or five years for this garden party. I'd been nominated this year, so we only had um, about a four or five week wait from being invited um, to actually attend the garden party. It was honestly a once in a lifetime experience. Um, it absolutely beautiful. Um, at one point I was worried about whether we'd be able to go just due to health needs and disability. There was a lot to arrange, carer to arrange, etc. We did get an extra ticket for one of my carers um, to go with us. So I was allowed to bring a guest and then also a carer um, as well. 
If you have a disability and require a carer to attend, you need to arrange this prior to the party because all um, identification and documents need to be provided beforehand. It's all in the information pack that you receive. Um, we arranged it as soon as we got the first invitation email. Um, it meant that we could also choose the date where usually you give them the date that you would um, like to attend and then you receive an invitation. It could be any of the dates. They pretty much guaranteed the date that we'd chosen because of the access needs that needed to be arranged, um, carers that needed to be booked, etc, etc. Um, so if you do need a carer to attend, do make sure that you pre-arrange it. There is a rule where only over 18s can attend garden parties. So we waited approximately half an hour and then we were next in line. Just tell me what you've been doing again. You've been working with food banks? I do a bit of everything to be fair. I'm like a professional volunteer. Professional volunteer? Yeah, that's my job. My full time job is volunteering. <laughs> So I do pretty much. Well, last week, well, no, well look, two, the last fortnight, we've done treasure hunts around local parks. Oh, right. So I hid a few hundred tins around like our local area and numerous parks. Some had money in, they had toiletries in, toys in. Yeah. So then basically families could go out for a free activity, find a tin, and take a, something out of it that they want or need, and then they can add things to it they don't need as well. Three people from Middlesbrough, so Mark is then Pip Donaghan, Nice to meet you. 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 has been nominated because she does an awful lot of fundraising. Ah. Well, volunteering. Volunteering. Anything, yeah. anything in specific? Well, I heard you also help people with disabilities. Yes. And that's basically what I do. Any yeah. family yeah. impacted yeah. by mental health, learning disabilities, yeah. um, physical health, yeah. or chronic illness, terminal illness. And we do loads of different projects throughout the year. So like at Christmas, we've got Santa and his elves go and visit people at home that can't go out. Yeah. Like at the minute, we've got quite a few families where one of the parents is terminal. Okay. So like being able to like go out and give them that support and yes. be able to sit with Santa for an hour or two and have a last Aww. Christmas together is like yeah, really, really nice. Yeah. So do people get referred to you by other organisations? Yeah, they so identify the people that... I don't really help. work with one charity. No. I have ADHD. I'm not really a, a team player. So I work... <laughs> You like to freeform. Uh, <laughs> yes, and I'm literally like a professional volunteer. It's my full-time job. <laughs> That's what I do. I just volunteer every day, um, and then I just do as much as or as little as I yeah. can. Basically, I worked out a couple of years ago that I cost the UK 110 thousand pounds to keep me alive, yeah. and like that really you resonated with me. Than you actually get bigger. Well, no, because between my tube feed, my medications, like my medications are extremely expensive. Yeah. I literally added it all up, my care team, everything, £110,000. So, like, in my head, I needed to be worth £110,000 a year. Well, sounds like you give back so, a lot, a lot of people are struggling with the cost of living crisis on top of COVID. Like families are yes. really desperate yeah, for they it. Are. Like really desperate. Yeah. Like families are trying not to change their child's nappy because they can't afford to buy more. Yeah. And and it's it's those families that are like struggling behind closed doors yeah. that are scared to reach out to social services, yeah. especially where there's a disability or a neurodivergent parent. Like they're actually petrified yeah. and I've been working quite a lot with local healthcare providers to try and dispel that myth yeah. if you know what I mean yeah. and trying to promote cohesion I've been talking to the Middlesbrough mayor we've got elections in a couple of days yeah. so that might change but I've been trying to sort of get the the overall message across that yeah. people can ask for help because in Middlesbrough like we've got four out of ten people have never worked a day in their life wow. over the age of 16 We've got some of the highest unemployment rates. We've got some of the worst statistics for, for children that I have set in. Like in Middlesbrough, one out of four children passed the phase one phonics. One out of four. 
where you go to Stockton and you've got half you've got half chance of passing two out of four children. Yeah, yeah. So Middlesbrough is like a real area of deprivation. So I just started doing a little bit to help, really. Oh, you know amazing. I mean? And I'm just looking at your hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> go on, I'm loving the crown. But I didn't think <laughs> that I'd wear it again. Like, so I thought she wanted to do an environmental, I'd recycle. Yeah. Environmental yeah. thing. That's very sweet. <laughs> I love it. This is my friend Shep. Yeah. I've literally only just met him recently through oh. a mutual friend that volunteers yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but mine's not so much really, not as much as I used to because of before COVID. Yeah. Stop me from, because I used to do a lot with uh, Teesside Hospitals, not a lot, I used to go to Teesside Hospitals because I was, I was a member. Okay. <laughs> because I had to guide to go there. Okay. So, uh, so I just carried on going there to like support everyone else that was there, you know what I mean? So, and then COVID happened and then it was just like, I stopped, I stopped going so much, you know. Yeah, so. But it's wonderful you've kept on with the activities. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. After our meeting with Duchess Sophie, we then headed over to the royal tea tent. Obviously, we were later than many others, um, so we didn't get as much of a selection. There was still two desserts left and a one, uh, two or three different types of sandwiches slash wraps but it was absolutely lovely I took some home um, to enjoy once we got back to um, once we got back to the hotel room didn't want to risk being sick in the royal garden um, so yeah so we headed to the tea tent, picked up some food and a drink, I recommend if you go later you get the apple juice rather than the tea because the tea was a bit cold after being sat out for over an hour um, whilst people enjoyed the food. We were also told at the end to meet um, down the side of the, the columned building um, for the royal family walk past. Here's a quick picture of my food and this is my guest chef. We then got into position down the side of the column building which I believe is the swimming pool ready for the royal walk past. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been better on the grass in the wall. Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. We did. 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 We Oh, 
Don't walk in on the tube, though. This could be cut. Oh, I'm in the at this point I saw the amount of people following behind us and I just thought I'd make a quick exit behind the King's Guard. One of the issues with being an electric wheelchair is not everybody sees you and you run the risk of running people over. On the way out it suddenly dawned on me that we'd never do this again so I took one last look at Buckingham Palace in all its glory. The thing about royal garden parties is that you're only ever invited once. You can never be invited again. And they keep your records on file um, forever. So it certainly is a once in a lifetime experience when you know that you're never going to get invited again. So if you are invited, I honestly, I recommend going along. I know sometimes when you have disabilities, it's a lot to organise you know, with accessible hotels, not being able to do the trip, like, you know, over a short period of time, there's extra planning goes involved, but it, it really is a once in a lifetime experience, and the party was just, it was a beautiful day out, absolutely beautiful, so yeah, do it if you're invited. So this brings us to the end of um, my video whilst we approach Buckingham Palace Gates. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed attending the garden party with me and sharing the experience. A huge thank you to Carla, uh, one of my uh, home support workers who I really wouldn't have been able to do this without her. Thank you so much Carla for taking me. Thank you so much Jim for driving us all the way there and all the way back. And a huge thank you to Shep, my guest. I uh, hope you enjoyed the day as much as I did. One last look at Buckingham Palace, because we'll never be going to a garden party again. Isn't it absolutely magnificent? Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Pip Disabled Mum, over and out.